This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to another video on Prime Mover. Let's jump right into it. Uh, last time we discussed end gates and add, and uh, I said be up for modulo 2, so let's have a look at that one. Modulo 2, if C is odd, send 1 to D, if C is even, send a 0 to D. So there's our uh, instructions, um, tells what it says in the bottle. Um, here C and D. And to solve this one, let's look at um, what being divisible by 2 actually means, how we can um, derive a value of 1 or a 0 for odds and evens and basically um, if we look at 16 it's divisible by 2 because it is it's 8 times 2 and what that means is that you can subtract 2 from it to get 7 times 2 you can subtract 2 from it to get 6 times 2 you can it's it's built up out of values of 2 so let's let's do that let's um, Let's build a pipeline here where we just subtract 2 from it. Or let's just subtract 1 from it. Let's say we have this 2 value here and subtract two from it, or subtract 1 from it, we get 1. Now for this 1 value we can check if it is 0 or not. It is not. Um, but if it were, if, uh, if we had a 7 uh, and, and we have a... Um, Maybe I should put this one good up because we could use this one in between. Um, and again, a test here. I should change the pulse on the test. So, say that this is our loop. I think this will work uh, quite nicely. We get a. Um, uh, let's take a 7 for instance. Um, so that's 6 and 5, it's not 0, so it continues. Uh, 4 and 3, 2 and 1, still goes on. Subtracting 1, and now we have 0. So we know that this number is odd, because if it would have come out of this test, it would have been even. So here, even numbers will become 0, and here, uh, odd numbers will also become 0, but we want a 1 on the output for these. So there we have it. Um, maybe we can do this a little bit better logistically speaking. Because we want both numbers to hit the switch and let the next number come in. So then we have our even case and our odd case still needs to add one of course, this one. Since this route is shorter from where it leaves the loop, let's make it travel a little bit longer on the outside. Um, and let's see if this covers it. Two comes in. Turns out to be even. Releases the next number. Seems to work. And there's modulo 2. Now for reverse. As you can see I've already built a machine for reverse. This machine um, and, and the later machines are so complex that it's um, uh, kind of hard to just build them 
live on telly as, as it were so um, I'm just gonna show what I've built um, reverse <coughs> Read the sequence from A, the sequences are terminated by zeros, reverse the sequence and send them to D. So if we look at what we're getting, we're getting a 5, a 16, an 8 and a 0, and we want the 0 first, then the 8, 16, and then the 5. So it's uh, in reverse order. Um, how can we reverse a uh, stream? Um, for that we need memory cells. So these are memory cells. Uh, luckily no... Um, sequence will be longer than five numbers so this can store up to five numbers and the six will be then uh, then will be a zero um, now first let's look at our input side um, it's basically a very small machine that looks if the, we get terminating zero or not whatever number comes through it uh, toggles the switch to let the next number in uh, if it's a zero it will also toggle but with a bit of a delay and both the zero will be output here as well as any number maybe I could change that and drop this one in fact um, so here comes any positive number and zero and the zeros are put on this track with uh, some more delay uh, and eventually the zero comes here is sent to the output by this duplicator and sent to this machine, then sent to this memory cell, then to this one, then to this one, and finally one zero is let into here. Any positive number uh, comes into this machine. Um, first number that comes in hits the switch. Every following number that comes in here is switched into here and keeps the switch in this position so it's let out of this side and moves on to the next cell. And any number coming into here is copied. One is stored here, this is our actual uh, memory bit. And the other one goes to this one. And uh, what this basically does, if, if you look at the connection here, uh, it, it, uh, it listens to the incoming zero. And apparently it has a copy coming in from whatever number we have. And that sets this little bit. All this does is uh, manage the switch. Any zero coming in here will be destroyed. Unless this switch got toggled um, from storing a number so this um, uh, the zero coming in will eventually release this lock uh, but uh, I had a problem designing this with um, uh, sequences of three then the zero would also be sent to the fourth cell would unlock this uh, and in uh, the next sequence where we would have four numbers then the number would come in here and the lock would already be opened and the number would walk out so this is a filter for that um, if we are storing a number then the zero is let through and if we are not storing a number so if this line wasn't triggered by storing a number then the zero is destroyed and the zero does not interfere with the inner workings of this bit so then the zero comes in, it resets this switch to allow new input and it uh, unlocks this so the number travels out and relocks itself. And there's five machines of these, the last one's slightly different because we don't need to pass uh, the value along. Um, so it's, it's a little bit simpler but it's practically the same design. So that's the machine, let's see if this actually reverses numbers. Any number that comes in here is uh, copied, uh, lets the next number through and the numbers here move along the memory cell and zeros are uh, put into here. This zero is now put onto the track and because it takes some time for the zero to release all the cells and, and for any number in fact that's why this delay is here for five numbers to move through these cells and, and uh, get to the storage locations that takes a while. So here's a... Uh, delay on releasing the next cycle of numbers and here you can see the zeros traveling in and unlocking the memory cells um, because the zeros are put in from bottom to top and the numbers are put in from top to bottom you get the reverse effect this is a particularly short sequence apparently let's take a better look at how the memory cells work in the next cycle So 
Uh, new numbers are coming in now. Just as numbers are released here. So this number is stored here. Now the 8 is coming in. And as you can see with the switch and, and the 12 the same. The switch is in this position first. Then it gets toggled and it stays in this position. Switch is here first. And now it stays in that position. Every number coming in uh, tells the zero filter that it allows zeros to come in. And every other number is passed along. And this cell is already full. So here we see a zero coming up while the six is still coming in here. So this is timed so that the last memory cell can store a number at the same time as a zero coming in. But that means that the rest is a bit uh, delayed in fact. Because it needs to wait until uh, this cell might hypothetically be ready, even if we don't have numbers for that location. And there's reverse. It can be done a lot faster. I, uh, I haven't looked at other possibilities. I w in fact was pretty... Um, I was pretty satisfied with finding this particular solution. This had me thinking for a long time. Um, so there's reverse and then there's copy if. Um, this, this machine has a slight design flaw so I've built a slightly better one though it looks more convoluted. Uh, send C to A, C goes to A, and send D to B, D to B. If C is a negative one, se send in addition to sending C to B, send C also to A. And if D is negative one, copy C onto the B track. C and D are never zeros. So here's the input filter again, uh, the, the delay in fact on, on numbers coming in, so uh, whenever a D number comes in it also picks up a C number, the numbers run through this uh, together, and that's important, uh, and eventually um, a number is sent out here to unlock the next number, because Every number will be traveling along this track twice. It has the switch in it, so the first number is destroyed and the second number is allowed to go through and uh, get the next numbers. Now, why do I get every number twice? Um, what this machine does basically is it takes two numbers and it has a default path routed into it. Uh, and the default path is that uh, every, any positive input will be sent along to its respective output. And every second input, so that's our, our backup input, in case this was negative 1, is destroyed. And the uh, switches keep it uh, from permanently destroying itself. Uh, or make it permanently destroy itself. So here's a, neg uh, a negative uh, or a positive value coming in, and that's just sent along, and the second one is whatever, and that's destroyed. Uh, and here's a negative number coming in. Then it's sent over this way uh, and gets destroyed itself. It toggles the switch so that the second value will run up to here and then go to the output. Same strategy for the uh, second machine. And here's the bit that uh, actually does the copying. So a number comes in here, uh, one copy is sent uh, straight up and this is the your primary value. So as long as this isn't negative we want this value to go out. Uh, and if it is negative then we want uh, this copy with a bit of a sideway move to come into here so here's our um, D to B value running along and here C gets added to it as a backup value which on default gets destroyed but might pass along and this works exactly the same so this copy uh, uh, here's your C number coming in, and here's the D copy joining it. So, sure, it looks good on theory. So, here we see the negative one 
being destroyed and the five running along. First outputs is a five and a five. And we have another negative one, so let's look at it. Negative one is going in here, the 10 is now joining it. Negative one toggles the switch and the 10 moves along. For the next numbers, not a negative. Here we get a 77 on this track. So that just moves along the default path and whatever follows, which on the C side is now a negative gets destroyed. So there's copy if it's, uh, it's fun to see that the puzzles are ramping up in difficulty, it's uh, fun to see that the solution is not always in the components that they give you, but also a lot in timing and in using spare copies and in, in lots of tricksy ways around the components themselves. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a good uh, build up for the, for the game's difficulty. Uh, maximum and reorder where um, we've already looked at in my, in my first couple of videos. Um, so next up we'll look at negator and or multiplicator, which I found a very fun puzzle. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.